Afternoon guys and welcome. So we are just picking up right where the last video left off. Oh, cutting wood, preparing to get started on the last wall on this side. Um, that'll be the final wall of the loft minus the top section that once I get the beams put in, then I'll um, do the top section, the uh, balloon framing, I think is what I came to the conclusion that it's called. So welcome back guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for continuing with this series. Building in Ohana. Whew. Tired already. <laughs> I know this video is just beginning, but I've already been working all day today. So, um, but continuing, like I said, I'm going to get this wall going. Also, I wanted to let you guys know that um, I did start an Instagram page for Airbnb, if you're interested. I'll post it in the description below. Um, also, I mean, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to probably see more than what's going to be posted on there. But eventually down the road, there will be other stuff posted on there and like repost when people stay, stuff like that, you know, social media presence something like that someone told me once <laughs> so anyway um let's get uh let's get going let's get to work so i have the double top cap on here and then i have this side laid out or the top and bottom caps are laid out i'm cutting the boards there which i need to cut a couple more and then this one is going to be um, not just a, a standard wall like that because this one will have a window in it and it will also have a C channel, which is basically this piece here. That's where the interior wall is going to be. And then on this side, there will be an interior wall coming this way for the bathroom that's gonna be here. Uh, so I will continue cutting that wood, get it up here, get this one framed up. Um, it goes very quick on these walls because they're small. I'm only doing the six foot height because that's what this back wall is. So I'm just matching everything so that I have a continuous top cap and double top cap all the way around on all of these sides. And then from there I will build up, which now that I think about it, I don't think that I actually showed down here. Let me go downstairs. Okay, yeah, I forgot that I did this and I don't think I ever showed it in the last video, um, the previous video. So basically all I did on there is I did my vertical beams and then they got attached into this main beam and then there's still a top cap that goes on there. So if you go out here, you can see that there's a top cap that goes down. So this was a little tricky because you gotta cut everything at an angle and then also place it so that it's plumb and then continue with your 16 inch on center from one corner all the way to the other, which I think I mentioned in the last video, I got into a little trouble with that. So if you walk over here and you look right here, I don't know if it's showing up, I think it will, but that's where the two pieces of siding meet. So they didn't line up because my two by four on that side that I started, I did my 16 inch on center, so everything's off on this end by four inches, which is weird. I don't know. I'm not sure how I messed that up, but I messed it up. So <laughs> uh, I have additional beams that I'm gonna put in here and then go in and renail the siding on the outside. So there's three spots where I gotta cut those in. So let me get back to cutting and uh, get this next wall up. So tricky. Wow. 
like a glove. That's really how slow and boring it is. <laughs> That's why I do so many time lapse. So it's the next morning. Got quite a bit of rain last night and this morning it's been raining a lot. And I have to say that the uh, tarp setup currently is holding up very nicely. There's not really any water in here at all. There's a little bit of drips right here. A little bit right by the door there. But other than that, it's pretty dry in here. So I'm thankful for that. Because <laughs> I don't want this whole place to get just soaked. And there'd just be puddles in here that I couldn't get out. So uh, this morning, I'm going to continue on the wall <coughs> where I left off yesterday. Uh, I need to get the double top cap up there and then I'm going to focus on getting these windows framed out. So I have the three windows up here that are above the roof on uh, this section. I have the bathroom window up there and then I have the balloon framing to do on this side to match this side. So that is what I'm going to try and get done today. All of that. All right so I'm going to show uh, I guess how to frame out a window. This may not be the best window to show because this one's not going to have an actual header unit in it. Um, just because this is a short wall already. Um, this is not a load bearing wall. This is the load bearing wall and then there's going to be a 4x8 beam up here. So there's not really going to be any weight on this at all. So that's why I'm okay with it. Um, when you are laying out a window and now the rain's coming, of course. So you can see my markings on here, right? So when you're laying out, you have your 16 inch centers, the X for the side that it goes on, C channel. When you're doing your windows, you have what is called a cripple, a jack, and a king stud. So the king stud runs the entire length of the whole thing. 
And then when you're doing your layout, layout you have your top and bottom uh, caps together. So everything is exact. So you use a square to draw your lines. So that way you know that when you nail in your board here and you nail in your board there, that everything's gonna be straight and plumb for the most part, unless you have like a warp board or something. So uh, this one has kind of like an X because this was where the actual 16 inch on center was. And the window that I'm putting in here is a 32 inch wide window and it's 24 inches tall. So when you're doing your layout, since I'm 16 inch on center, it's basically between two beams is where it's going, right? So your cripple is actually going to be underneath, which is where your windowsill will be. Your jack stud is what's going to hold your header. So if I was actually putting a header in here, like a four by six or four by eight, whatever it is, um, your jack stud would be cut to where the space of the header was. Um, a lot of times too, if your double top cap isn't right above that, you'll have cripples above the window, above the header as well, to fill in the space. This one, like I was saying, is unique. So um, basically what I'm gonna do is I'll put in my jack. I'm gonna add one more two by four in here. So basically three two by fours, that will become my header. Um, again, there's no, this is not a load bearing at all. Um, so it'll be fine. I just don't want the window to be too low because it's already, you know, this wall is six feet. So if it's gonna be, you know, four inches, four and a half inches below six feet, it's gonna be kind of low. But it, again, it is only a 24 inch tall window and it's the awning style. So it has a little hand crank and then it opens, you know, five or six inches, whatever it is. So basically I'm gonna put these pieces together and then you'll kind of see how it goes. Uh, I'm gonna do a time lapse but you should be able to still see what's happening. And there you go. So the window's framed out. <clears throat> so that is called a cripple, as well as these pieces here. They hold the window sill. The jack studs go up and hold the header, which in this case is just another two by four. But normally that'll be a four by six, four by eight, or sometimes you just make them like I did down there where I did a two by six and then uh, two by six, two by six, and just made a box. So that's called a box header because it's hollow on the inside or you can do a solid header. So that's how you frame a window, essentially. So kind of drenched, uh, I was just down cutting trees. So because of the storm that's passing, um, I think it's a, another hurricane, Hurricane Dora. Um, <laughs> some of our YV that were in the front of the Ohana here, right along the driveway, just kind of, for whatever reason, sometimes they just tip over, they don't fall down, they just, because they're so long and skinny, they just hang over. So they were hanging over in front of the Ohana. And then I had some that were over the driveway that were hanging down. So I just had to cut all those down. It's raining. It's been a few days, couple days, I think two days since the time lapse where I was framing in those windows up above. Um, so since it's been raining, I haven't had a chance to go and get the beams that are gonna be, you know, up on the loft level. 
So um, today I am just going to work on finishing up this balloon framing here that goes in this gable side. And then I'm going to start doing the house wrap uh, around the loft um, to get that done. And maybe this afternoon, if it clears up, I might get a chance to go, go to town and pick up those beams, otherwise possibly tomorrow. I don't know, it's kind of supposed to be raining for the next, I don't know, day or two, three days, something like that. So I'm gonna just continue with what I can, um, covering all kinds of tree stuff. <laughs> so I was chatting with my sister this morning and uh, she was asking me how much I spent so far on building this Ohana. Uh, and I know like in a couple of the earlier videos, I was giving you guys updates on the money for each stage of what I spent so far. Um, and I know I'm not totally done with framing and drying this in, but at this point, I added it all up this morning. We're at $15,895, I think it was. Um, that does not include the 45 or $4,800 that we spent on the clearing, rock, and house pad, getting everything prepped to start building the house. So we're just over 20,000 all in so far. Um, that does also include, I already bought all of the tongue and groove for the roof ceiling here and the roof ceiling over the loft. So, Essentially, for the framing, it's probably going to end up being 22000 somewhere around there, because I'm still going to have to buy the beams. That's going to be like another 500 bucks because I think they're about $100 each. I'm going to need 4, 8, 12, possibly 14 sheets of siding to finish this off. Um, maybe 12 sheets, actually. So that's going to be about six, seven hundred dollars because I think they're like fifty-five dollars a sheet. Um, and then, of course, we still have to buy windows. So the remaining windows are going to end up being six, twelve, probably fifteen hundred dollars for the remaining windows. So actually, it might by the time it gets like, I guess, fully framed in will probably be closer to 25000 And then for the roof, the roof metal is probably going to be 2500 bucks. So fully dried in, we're probably looking at $26,000. <laughs> we'll see. Once I get to that point, I'll do another update. So I'm going to get to work on these, get this stuff done. Um, I'll just show you guys when I'm finished because... Um, Actually, I'll probably show how I do this on at least one of them just to show you guys how to do it, or at least how I do it. Whether that's the right way or not, I don't know. But I'm going to show you guys anyway. And uh, then I'll just show you the rest when it's done. So let me get set up. All right, so I'm up at the top of this wall. <clears throat> and you can see I have my marks with the X's. So that's where my uh, beams are going to go. You can see how far I'm off. Remember I was talking before about how I had my 16 inch center off so that my sheets of plywood weren't matching up down here. But you can see the distance it's off right there, which is uh, four by four. So I figured out later, cause this side of the wall, although so the siding matched up, <clears throat> but because I didn't take this four by four into account, this side of the wall is what got messed up. So that side was still good. <laughs> anyway. I'm correcting it on this part, so when I put the next lay, uh, next level of siding up, it'll all be correct. So, what I do when I'm um, framing these, okay, like I was saying, what I do when I get ready to set these up is I take my 2x4, which this can just be cutoffs, and basically what I do is I set it right on my mark. This is going to be difficult to do one-handed, but... <laughs> And my dogs are going nuts, barking at the neighbors. So I set up my two by four right on the mark. So it's flush and in place. And then I take my level. And what I do from there is I 
come up here and let's see if I can get this. I put the level on there and I move this until it's plumb. Ah, again, this is very difficult to do one-handed because I can't move it back and forth. Let's see if I can grab this. Okay, there we go. Uh, so you get it plumb and hopefully this will stay in place. And then once it's in place, I take my pencil and I mark a line here across the top, which I'm barely pushing on this because I don't want it to move. And then I also go to the other side and I mark a line down the beam. I gotta set my phone down. Okay. So I mark a line on the beam, if I can get that. So then when I come back to put this on, I have a reference my level. I have a reference of where this goes back into. Then from there what I do is I adjust my saw and for me about nine degrees is what the cut seems to be. So you adjust your saw if you have that saw. You see which way your blade is going. See how it's angled. All right so once your saw angle is set you make sure your line is going the same way your blade is going. And then I do a, I use my square and do a line across there. And then what I do is I line up two two by fours, right? And again, I'm doing all this one handed, but <clears throat> the reason I do that is because this skill saw, which a lot of people, I don't know if they know it or not, but the guard on here is the exact distance of a two by four of the, you know, the two side of the two by four. So, um, what I'm doing here by using two 2x4s two is I'm getting my square in place to where the guard is going to slide on. The cut is going to be the, the distance of the 2x4 over. And then what I'm doing is I'm cutting off the amount needed for a 2x4 top cap to go on this piece once I put it back up on the wall. So let me get these pieces cut and then we'll go back up there and I'll show you how I do that. All right, and then from there, I take my piece, I put it back on my line, and I toe nail it in. So I do a nail on three sides at least. Usually one side, the outside, and then one of the, these two sides. And then, of course, you want to make sure that your angle's facing the right way. You don't want to put it in backwards. And then from there, let me uh, reposition on to this beam. So from there, I take my countersink bit, and I drill a pilot hole in the side. So since this is going the long way, I want to drill a pilot hole so that the board doesn't split. And then after that, I change the bits, if I can do that one-handed. <laughs> there we go. And I have and then I almost dropped my phone. And then I have these five inch, these are actually deck screws. So this is a five inch screw, so it'll go into the wood and then go a couple of inches into the uh, beam. And then that locks this in solid. It also gives additional support to the beam and then just makes everything stiffen up on this whole area. So once this siding goes on the side and the roofing goes on the top, all of this will be like really sturdy and nice. So let me get this screw in. And also my line that I put over here that's what I was talking about, so that when I bring this back, I can line it up. And then you see that this is cut down the distance of a 2x4, so when I put the 2x4 top plate on here, it'll be flush with this beam, so then the roofing material can just come right across. Alright, so all of these beams are up and nailed in and screwed in into place. And I have my top cap here that's ready to go on. So when you're doing beams like this that have an angled cut on them, and you need to make your top cap go flush into the wall that it's going into there, it's gonna be the same cut. So if these are nine degree cuts, the cut for that to go flush into the wall is gonna be a nine degree cut as well. And then it's gonna be the same on the top and the bottom. So really the, the beam could go on, or the top cap could go on either way. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this up in place and get it nailed. And that's what it looks like when the top cap's on. 
nice and flush with the beam. Nice platform for nailing the tongue and groove down on the roof. So this is basically ready for a house wrap and then the siding. But I'm going to have to work my way around. So I'm going to have to start over there and go around. This part's going to end up being the last um, bit because the siding gets put on in this direction. So house wrap has to go around this whole thing. And then I have to start doing the siding. I could put this siding on from this way and then just leave the one end loose. Um, I just would rather do it the right direction in case it doesn't line up. You know, if I end up being an inch short or an inch long or something like that, then I'm going to either have a gap or an overlap in the middle of my wall. So we'll see how I get to it. <laughs> All right. So after finishing that, I went in and I put these beams in to fix my siding on the outside. So I had something to nail to. So those beams are all in now. That's fixed. I have a little bit more nailing um, at the very top because I had my short ladder so I couldn't reach all the way to the top, but I'll get that. So now I'm working on the blocking that goes in between these beams. Um, I have the first three done. I'm working on the last one now. Um, they're just sitting in there. They're not nailed in or anything. You can see that one's bent back the wrong way even. Um, so these are basically angled out. And the lip of the 2x8 goes just over the lip of the siding. So it gives it a nice clean uh, line all the way across. The top there, the little piece sticking up, that's going to get cut off. So I have that mark already. And then I have marks on the outside. So I basically took my square, put it on the beam, and then the blocking is perpendicular to the beam. So it's leaning out slightly, but it's on the same angle as what the beam is, if that makes sense. So once it's all in place, I'll show you from the outside so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, guys, so the blocking is all in. As you can see, everything is uh, in place at the right angle. I'm going to step outside here real quick and show you what it looks like from the outside. All right, from the outside, you see what I was talking about, about the lip of the 2x8 hanging over the siding just slightly. Um, I didn't actually measure that, I just kind of used my finger to make it the same distance. So, But you can measure it and make it exact if you wanted to. But it gives you a really nice transition between the siding and then the roof structure technically. So, And it looks nice and clean, it's easy to paint. Once that's all caulked and painted, it'll just all blend in real nice. So, and then of course the roofing material will go on top of that. Then the purlins, which is what the roof actually attaches to that go across. So there will be a, a block there and then probably one in the middle of this beam, a two by four purlin going across. And then there will be the fascia piece on the end. And then all of that is what the metal roofing gets screwed into. But that will be for another episode. And with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video because I think it's getting very close to a 30 minute mark now. Um, <laughs> and I'm trying to show as much as I can on this, you know, of the whole process. Um, I know some of this might be kind of boring, but uh, if it helps a few people, then it's worth it, you know. Um, so I'm going to, of course, just keep continuing on and the next, uh, video will just start up where this one left off and I will keep going until this thing gets built. <laughs> so as always, guys, I want to say thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in. I will see you on the next video. Aloha.